There is a global meltdown coming. It is a global depression. And one world currency and one world financial system is the end game. China said last week they want one global currency. France said yesterday or the day before that they want one world order, a new world order, at the end of this event. Two nights ago, the government used $900 billion of your money to give loans to businesses and guarantee those loans. Did they even ask you? That's your money. Last night, for the first time, the interest rate was cut globally. Europe wants to present a blueprint for a new worldwide currency system, just as urgent are measures to fight an oncoming recession. We've been talking a lot here on the program over the past few months about the Treasury Department's $700 billion bailout plan, the TARP program. We've talked a lot less about the $2 trillion worth of emergency loans the Fed has doled out. We also don't know a lot about those loans. The Fed has refused to say which institutions it's loaning the money to or what the recipients are putting up as collateral. And that's taxpayer money they're lending. The Fed's two trillion dollar secret. Eric's laughing. Tony's totally yeah. laughing. <laughs> the government is refusing to identify which banks are getting nearly two trillion dollars in emergency loans. Well, the government is also not revealing the troubled assets that it is receiving as collateral. Investor groups and taxpayer advocates want more transparency. Bankers and Democratic Congressman Barney Frank, however, say the Fed's disclosure is sufficient. There's another uh, uh, piece of this puzzle that is also borderline illegal, which is that in addition to the $700 billion that we um, are discussing, the $700 billion bailout, there's another $2 trillion that's been handed out uh, by the Federal Reserve um, in emergency loans to financial institutions, to banks. Um, but actually, we don't really know who they're handing the money out to because apparently it's a secret. Um, they, they, they could be handing it out to a range of other corporations. I think they are. But um, they're saying that, that they, can, they won't discuss close who has received these taxpayer loans um, because it could cause a, a run on the banks it could cause the market to lose confidence in the institutions that have taken these loans that once again that represents an additional two trillion dollars the other things thing that that uh, the Fed won't disclose is what they have accepted as collateral in exchange for these loans this is a really key point because of course at the heart of the financial crisis is are, are these so-called distressed assets um, the value of these assets is is, is, is enormously controversial um, they, they may be worth very little so if the Fed has accepted distressed assets as collateral in exchange for these loans there's a very good chance that taxpayers aren't going to be getting this money back the, the banker bailout bill passed uh, back on October 3rd and signed with the president on October 3rd gave omnipresent, omnipotent power to the private Federal Reserve and to the Treasury. And the Treasury said, oh, we've got to have this right now or the economy will go into depression. Now, that itself was economic terrorism to have the Treasury Secretary and the president and not just Bush, Barack Obama spearheading calling the Black Caucus, calling Congress, going on the news, saying we've got to have this or we'll have a depression. Well, just that itself destroyed confidence. The market, of course, plunged 900 and something points. And then they got the bailout and within days said, we're not going to give the $850 billion. And the bill really said $5 trillion. That's now in Bloomberg and AB. We're going to give that to banks. And then the big banks, not your Main Street or local bank, but the big you know, inner new world order banks that control the currencies of the world, they said, we're keeping it for bonuses and we're keeping it to buy healthy financial institutions, uh, regional banks, local banks, foreign banks. We're going to give it to uh, overseas banks, Chinese banks, Arab banks, British banks, European banks. And so that happened. So there's no doubt that this is a controlled consolidation vertical integration. I mean, go back to two and a half years ago when I was at Bilderberg in Canada. We came on the air. We wrote stories at PrisonPlanet.com and at InfoWars.com. You covered it. You had Daniel Estlin on. We have a video clip from uh, June 2006 at the hotel with Daniel Estlin. He had his source inside. So did Tucker. And we said, what do the sources say? It's all on video. They said, they're going to run the market up to 14000 in the next year. They did that. Then to sucker people in. Then they're going to pop the subprime mortgage bubble, but that's only the pretext to then cut off liquidity. So they got the American people and the world in debt. They told us debt was the way to go. They told everybody go out and get these loans. 
and then they cut the blood supply off. And so basically, the currency, the liquidity, the loans have been cut off to companies, to Ford, to GM, uh, to the media, to everybody who was told to you know, basically run our economy based on this. And so the economy is like a zombie right now. The blood is not flowing. It's basically dead. And that's what this small inner group of banks needs to consolidate things. So they're flush in $5 trillion they've stolen in five weeks. They're flush in that money. They did a bait and switch, according to Senator Inhofe and Congressman uh, Kucinich mm -hmm. and Cummings and Issa. What they said and what they performed were two different things. Which, if you go back to the guest you had on, I was listening that whole week to you and your guest, and of course my cell phone, six weeks ago, last time I was on, folks, go to Scream Lake, listen to it. We said they are, it's going to be trillions, and I read the Bloomberg headline of five trillion, because they read the bill too, and we said this is going to kill the economy. So when we talk about auto dealers, that's really a red herring. I mean, I'm no fan of Ford and GM and Chrysler. They've certainly been bureaucratic and had a lot of problems, but still, they're all we have left as a real industrial uh, base. It is strategic. It is national security. And so we have $5 trillion given to these multinational foreign banks that aren't even American who lied to get it. And then we're debating whether $25 billion in loans should be given to automakers. Now, I agree that's not going to fix the problem. It's not going to fix the quality problem. The issue is we should give $25 billion if we're going to give $5 trillion to foreign banks because part of that $25 billion would at least uh, trickle down into the real economy. And so this is going to be a death knell if they allow these to go into bankruptcy, if this happens, and I'm sure it is. This is part of blowing out America for a fire sale. It's in the Club of Rome documents, Trilateral Commission documents. And, and then the incredible thing we saw, I Googled last week the term New World Order in Google News, clicking news, not web, right. 59,000 articles. Every major paper in the country and the world said, a new world order is what we need, a world government by these banks, they will set the price of currencies every day, they will control markets, they will regulate, they will fix the problem. But they are the ones that orchestrated this crisis so they could offer the solution which was greater control. And so now we openly see world government being announced. And last week, Kashkari, this week, Paulson, said, hey, we're, they chastised Congress, and they said, we're not going to tell you where two trillion of the five trillion went. That was in Bloomberg, AP, Reuters. So yeah. basically, imagine. it's none of your business. We needed you to approve it, but we're not telling you where we're spending. And remember that clause we covered on air six weeks ago that you and your guests covered at nauseum. It said in the bill that unlimited power, no review, right. total secrecy would be given to the Treasury. And so people think the government's taking over the banks. No, the government's not getting a voting share in all this stock. They are being taken over by the banks and world government of and by a private inner group, not your Main Street Bank folks, but the central private bankers are taking over. So Bloomberg News is um, has launched a lawsuit uh, in federal court to find out who has received the loans and what has been accepted as collateral because they believe that this lack of transparency is illegal. So that's why um, that's why I, we're calling this the, the trillion dollar crime scene or the multi-trillion dollar crime scene. Bloomberg News is trying to change that. The organization filing suit last week to force disclosure Matthew Winkler is the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg News, one of my bosses here at Bloomberg. He joins me now from our newsroom in New York to talk about this lawsuit and uh, this unusual step. Uh, thank you, Matt, for, for helping to explain this for us tonight. And, and tell me, why take this step? Why was a lawsuit necessary here? Well, we had hoped, Peter, that uh, at this point there would be a uh, willingness on the part of all branches of the government to make uh, the taxpayer fully aware of how the taxpayer's money was being used in this unprecedented financial crisis. Well, Fox Business disagrees, and that's why we are joining the fight. Fox Business's legal team filing a Freedom of Information Act request with the Treasury Department. Treasury has 20 days to respond. They may request as well a 10-day extension. So if we have not received this information in 30 days, Fox Business then plans to file a lawsuit against the Treasury Department. Guys, 
What do you say? Right move, wrong move? Absolutely right move. Um, you, you know, we talked about this yesterday, that transparency is what, you know, the lack of transparency is what got us into this mess.